bringing the people behind our food to life. Today I'm gonna to make a batch of marinated roasted red peppers. Here are my peppers, aren't they beautiful? I'm just gonna pop them under the broiler and we're gonna char up the sides and the skins. So in, in they go. And so what's gonna happen is that every one or two minutes I'm gonna check them and we'll turn them so they all get blackened on all the sides and then they'll cool for a bit and then we'll be able to peel the skin off and have this really tender, beautiful pepper flesh. While they cook, I'm gonna build my marinating liquid. So it's a really simple marinade. We start with some bottled lemon juice and you always wanna use, when a recipe calls for bottled lemon juice, you want to use the bottled lemon juice because it's not just there for flavor. What it's doing is creating a safe, high acid environment so that these peppers will be safe throughout their canning life. So we use a quarter of a cup of the lemon juice. some uh, red wine vinegar, and this is three quarters of a cup. And again, this is giving us that really high acid environment that'll keep these peppers nice and safe. And you'll often hear people say that it's unsafe to can with any oil in your foods, but it's gonna be a relatively small amount per jar, and the acid content in this preserve means that there still will be so much acid in the jar that there's no way for the olive oil to have a negative effect on the safety and quality of the product. So this is a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And truly, if the olive oil makes you nervous, you can leave it out. But it just adds such lushness and flavor to the finished product that I really, um, I prefer it when it's in there. All right, so that's our liquid for the marinade. Now, sort of the flavor additives. So we start with about a teaspoon and a half of granulated sugar. If you're off sugar these days, and a lot of people are, you could also use some honey or agave in this if you prefer. Then we use some salt. And I don't have every recipe in my book memorized, so I keep having to look to make sure I'm getting the right amounts. This is um, a sea salt. You wanna make sure that when you pick a salt for any canned product that you make, that it doesn't have any um, of the additives that prevent it from clumping or iodine because they can discolor the finished product. So a sea salt is good, or you can get um, pickling salt, which is good for an application like this as well. So this is just a half a teaspoon, just enough to uh, kind of perk up the peppers. All right, and now I'm gonna add some peppers. In the book, I call for Aleppo pepper, but basically any sort of medium heat, coarsely ground pepper will work for this. So if you can't get Aleppo, a, a nice um, medium heat chili powder is gonna be great. And I'm just gonna add about a half a teaspoon. And the minute you add it, you get this really lovely spice flavor it sort of permeates the room and it's gonna get even more delicious as we heat it up. And then the final ingredient is just some freshly ground black pepper. You can measure this out, but I tend to just count the grinds and call it good. So I'm gonna do six grinds. Two, three, four, five, six. So there's our brine, and we're just gonna heat this up. But before I put it on the burner, I'm gonna go check my peppers to make sure that they're not overcooking. So I'm gonna grab a pair of tongs. Not quite there yet, but you can see they're starting to blister in this corner, so that's perfect. We'll give them a little turn and pop them back in. They're gonna to continue to cook, and we're gonna go heat up our marinating liquid. We just wanna bring it to a boil to ensure that the sugar dissolves and the salt dissolves and that the pepper flavor really gets um, fully integrated into the lemon juice and vinegar. Ah, here we go. That's what we're looking for. You can see how they're blackening there. So now that it's starting to blacken on one side, I'm gonna flip them over. This is a good way to get to know your broiler too and where its hot spots are. So we're gonna flip all these guys. And then just slide this back and let them keep working. So our peppers are finished roasting, so I'm gonna just pull them out and then we're gonna let them cool down. Look at those. 
you can see we've got all this nice char right there and that's what we want. So I'm gonna turn our broiler off and walk these over here. We're just gonna put them in the colander in the sink to help them cool down a little bit. They smell so good. So now I'm going to peel my peppers. They have wilted, they have sunk into themselves, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to get a little water running and use the water to help pull the peels off. And they'll be really hot inside, so watch yourself that you don't get steam burns. And the peels really should just slide right off. And once you've got them peeled, you can kind of just pull the seeds out, the top off there, and then expose the seeds and just let them rinse away. And then for these marinated peppers, what I like to do is just tear them by hand. We don't need any perfect slivers. So just tear them into pieces kind of like that and put them on the cutting board when they're ready to go. Our peppers are all peeled. I'm gonna get our jars out of the canning pot and we're gonna fill them up with the peppers. So. so for this step, you can just use your fingers and tuck the pepper strips into the jars. And you wanna get them in there pretty tightly. All right, that looks good. And then this one. And if you wanted a different shape for these, like I just tore them into strips as I peeled them, you could also dice them for like fine dice. Um, you could use it in a vinaigrette, um, potato salad. It could be sort of a um, pimento pepper like you would use. But for me, I like to serve them alongside, you know, hummus and, and pita and things like that. And so they're nice in the strips because you can pull them right out of the jar and um, drape them across a piece of pita bread or something like that. So here is our brine and I brought it to a boil earlier. And so I'm just gonna pour some into each jar. And it doesn't look like I'm getting a lot in right now, but that's because I'm going to use a chopstick. And I'm just gonna kind of poke around the peppers. And what this will do is it allows the marinating liquid to fill up all those cracks in between the peppers and we'll actually be able to get more of the liquid in once we make space for it like this. So now I can put a little bit more of the liquid in. Another way to make sure that you're getting all of the little air bubbles out and you're getting all the brine in is to squat down and look at the side of your jars. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm going to take a peek and I can see that there are lots of air bubbles that I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't come down to this level. All right, that one looks pretty good. And it's okay if a little bit of the brine sneaks out as you're removing all the air bubbles. I'm gonna wipe the rims before we put the lids on so that it won't have an impact. So there are my jars. I'm just gonna wet my finger and wipe the rim. And what I'm feeling for here is I wanna make sure that there's no oil residue on the rim of the jar. So I feel a little bit, I'm gonna grab the corner of a towel and just turn it and wipe off any oil that you feel. And then this one, the same. Now I'm gonna grab my lids and they're in the canning pot. And these have warmed up and that sealing compound there has softened up nicely. So I'm just gonna set these on tops of the jars. And this nifty tool I'm using is a lid wand. It's just a magnet on a plastic stick 
but it allows you to get those warmed lids in and out of the water easily without burning yourself or scratching the coating that's on the lids, which you don't want to do. So rings go on and you just turn these to the point where they meet resistance. You don't want to tighten these too much because the oxygen that I've just trapped in the headspace of the jars needs to be able to escape when the jars are boiling. And if you tighten those rings too much, it can't escape naturally. And so by just turning them to the point where they meet resistance, I get a, a jar that I know is going to seal well. And put our canning pot back on the burner here and turn it on. I've got my jar lifter and these jars are just going to go right into the water. And I stack the jars right in this pot, which is fine. The water will still be able to circulate. And um, one of the reasons I like this little pot for canning is that it comes with a rack. And so the jars are out of contact with the direct heat of the burner, but um, and the water can circulate around them, so you get this really good heat penetration. When your jars are in there, you want to check and make sure that they're covered by water by about an inch or so. And these are, so I'm just going to put the lid on the pot to trap the heat, turn it up so that it comes to a rolling boil, and then once it's at a rolling boil, I'll set a timer for 15 minutes. When that 15 minutes is up, these jars will come out of the canning pot, cool down, seal, and be shelf stable. With a product like this, because it has oil in it, oil can go rancid over time. So this isn't a preserve that you want to keep on the shelf for two or three years. This is really about a year, six, you know, nine months to a year because of the oil content. Um, the USDA always says that you want to eat your home, homemade preserves within about a year. Um, and that's for best quality. Some things will last longer. Some things can start to decline sooner than that. So as you make preserves, you know, don't just let them sit forever. Taste them, see how they're doing, and sometimes eventually things will go off. So make sure that uh, you eat these before uh, too long is up.